Hello everyone, I wanted to share a quick tip with you guys, and I also have a couple announcements at the end of the video, so stick around for that if you want to. Um, well, I was watching lately Andrew Price's uh, latest donut tutorials, which if you're a new Blender user, definitely check out those, those videos. I have a link to them in, in the description. But he was showing us how we could have a bunch of objects or a bunch of particles that use the same material, but yet we can use this, this randomness here in order to give them different colors, even though they're all part of the same material. However, what made me think of, of what I'm about to show you in this video is a comment that he made in one of his later videos in that series. Now you could actually do the same thing as we did uh, for the sprinkles and create that random through color ramp option for this. The trouble I've found with doing it for the donut icings is that you can sometimes just end up with a bad batch where you've got like a string of like yellow donuts and you can't change it because there's no sample option for the, the random thing. So I find it's better if you haven't got enough objects to instead just manually set up the colors. Um, and it also just allows you, allows you to finesse it as, uh, as more of an artist. Yeah, the, the thing that he was saying is we can add an object info node and plug it into a color ramp so that they all have different colors. However, you cannot change the arrangement. So say we don't want these blue books and brown books to be there. Maybe we want the colors to be a different randomness. So this is how we can do that. There's actually a very simple fix for this. So what we can do is we can add a texture called a white noise texture. Now what, what a white noise texture is, if you don't know, is it's basically a texture with a bunch of little pixels on it. So think of something kind of like the checker texture, except instead of big squares, it's a bunch of tiny little pixels, so small that from far away, in fact, if we visualize this, uh, it just looks all gray, even though there's black and white and light gray and dark gray in there. It gives us a, a random value between zero and one, that is between black and white, uh, just like this random output uh, from the object info node. So what we, and we also get colors. That's a nice thing. If we want to actually have colors right out the gate, we can do that. So what we can actually do, let me visualize my shader again. We can just take this white noise texture and put it in between our, our random node there, our, our random object info node there. And right away we get, we get a different, a different, a different randomness. So we see a bunch of brown, but maybe we don't like all those brown books there. We still want to be able to change that. Well, Something that we could do, which is not what I'm going to land up doing, uh, but for example, you could set this white noise texture to 4D, and you have this W slider, and you can see as we cycle through this. Let me let me switch over to Material Preview here so that we get uh, a little bit of a quicker response here instead of rendering. Um, but if we change this, if we change this W here, we see we, we it's basically like a seed value. Um, but the problem I find potentially with that is if we have this as a 4D texture, there's four different dimensions of it, it might make Blender a little bit slower. It might not do much, but I would rather use a one-dimensional texture because that's really all we need. We're just going from zero to one here, so it's just one, one dimension here. And we can plug that randomness into that W that we get in that case. And in order to get that randomness back, all we have to do is add a math node, which you can shift A and search for math. I have my own keyboard shortcut. And just leave it like that. You just have this one add thing here. And then once our preview updates, uh, say we don't like all of those greens there. There's too many greens and too many browns. Uh, well, we can just cycle through this and get a different arrangement. That looks like a nice arrangement. And it's kind of, kind of like a seed value. Um, so what we could do is we could actually group all of these together, uh, select them and press Control G, and then we can uh, add an input here. Uh, let me just set this to zero by default, and we can plug th that in as an input. Um, let me also make sure that our black and white value is there, so we have both of them as an option. I'm going to put this above the color like it is there. If it will go, there we go. <laughs> and Oh, then I'm going to change that value that we just plugged in from the input. I'm just going to change it to W. And I'm going to name this a uh, random object or whatever you want to call it. And now we, we have control of that, of that W from the outside. Now, there are some more advanced ways to do this. this. This might give you all you would need, but maybe we want this to be instead of a slider that says 0.800 or goes up to... 
you know, 22.00 or something like that. Maybe we want it to be just an integer, just a single number, uh, kind of like we see here on the, 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 the um, where is it? The seed value for, for cycles rendering to change the, uh, um, the, the render, uh, the, the noise pattern for the render. Say we want it to look like this. I'm not going to do this in the tutorial. I'm going to do this in another video, but just as a, as a preview, if I add a brick texture, uh, this has an integer on it. We could use that as an output, as an input in order to turn this into an integer instead of just a float value as it is. But the problem is, as you'll see, there's no input, so we can't use that in, in our node. But I'll show you how we can do that. If anyone does know of a node in Shader Nodes that has a, an integer that you can use as an input, let me know. But uh, in lieu of that, in another video, I will show you um, maybe how to make this node a little bit more fancier in order to get a few more options out of it in other situations, in other cases. Uh, for example, uh, like over here with little Suzanne here, we could also use a, a random per island thing. And in order to show this, I have to switch over to rendered view. I just realized material preview doesn't work. But see, uh, Suzanne here has uh, the, the eyeballs are not connected to the rest of it. So that's what we call separate mesh islands, even though they're part of the same mesh. Uh, this is a node that we have in, in Blender, as we see here. But this gives us a, a seed value for that. But I also have another option that you can use for... Uh, like say a Veronoi texture, if we have different colors, but we want to randomize the colors for those. And also a way to get this integer value here. And that actually is one of the announcements that I wanted to let you guys know about. So I have two announcements. One is I am planning on doing live streams in Blender uh, very soon. And the second announcement is we have a new uh, Patreon supporter. His name is Andy Shu. Hopefully I got your name right. If you support me on Patreon, you can get this file. And even if you don't support me, you can, you can just get this file on Patreon now. And you can see some of the other little gems that I've hopefully hopefully put in here. And that actually has to do with the first announcement of that live. Um, when I go live, I actually want to show you guys some things that I have done in this file. So as, as a preview, I created this file especially for this tutorial, but I, I went a little crazy, went a little overboard. You'll notice that these books are actually just boxes. There's no geometry here uh, except for just eight vertices of a reshaped cube. All this detail that you see, the, the, the pages, the covers, the little crease before the spine, all of that is done in shader notes because I think that can be very useful uh, to learn just what is possible in shader nodes. You might be able to save yourself some time and some computing power in, in other ways, or, or, or maybe you just find it fun. Some things I would like to share in, in future uh, live streams is also uh, some techniques that I have uh, am, am working on perfecting for creating realistic and accurate planets and other space art, like what you're seeing on the screen right now I'm probably putting up in, in, in the editing. Um, but yeah, for now, I thought the first live streams could be showing uh, this scene. I'll show you guys how I made this. It's pretty simple how I made this shelf in geometry nodes, but especially the wood pattern. That wood texture is completely procedural. Um, I'll, I might be adding a wood floor. And you guys can give me suggestions in the chat, uh, and you can also ask questions, and you can help me decide what we're going to do with this scene. Maybe we'll turn it into a whole schoolroom or classroom, or maybe, maybe a library, and uh, just see what we can learn. Uh, when I'm thinking right now of doing this on Mondays or maybe Fridays, maybe turn notifications on so you'll know when I'm live. Uh, if not, that's fine. Just keep your eyes open on Mondays or maybe Fridays and come hang out and do some stuff in Blender with me. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you have an awesome day and I can't wait to see you in the next video or the next live stream.